passage out of Luke, out of our reading, and, and that's, that's how we'll, we'll do the sermons for the next uh, seven weeks or so, um, is, is out of our reading that we're, we're doing in, in, our, in our study. And so this week was uh, out of Luke, and we, we talked about that. Luke is one of those, those books that, that, that I found I don't, I don't preach from normally. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Luke. I like Luke. It's, it's very direct. It's, it's, boy, right on. Um, and so I'm not sure why I don't, don't preach from it. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll find out why once we get into this. Uh, but, but what we're going to look at this morning, we're going to look at Forward to Freedom um, in Matthew chapter 5. As we just sang, break through this forward to freedom probably plays right into that um, as, as we get into this. And, and I'm going to be using the NIV as what we're going to be using as a, as a jump off point, and we'll use that. And I, I found some passages that I really liked in the message, um, the way that it put it. And so we're, we're going to use those too. Um, so uh, it's going to kind of bear with me as I'm thinking through this. So Matthew chapter 5, starting with verse 27. And it says this, it says, After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. And we don't really read that. We think, okay, uh, we can picture that. Levi's sitting at one, one little bitty booth. That's how we picture uh, one little uh, you know, stand and seat there, a little shack. And he's kind of probably on a, on, a, on a dock someplace waiting for ships to come in, ships, you know, boats to come in. And he's going to take the... Some... Actually, because of the way that it's written, he was probably like a, a tax office. Uh, and so there was actually more than one person there, and, and that plays into the next portion of the scripture. So, so here's Levi, and we also get the impression that, that he and Jesus knew each other somehow, uh, though we don't see that anyplace else, because Jesus come, just kind of comes up and says, follow me. We know he has that ability, we know he has that, that uh, capability that he could do that, and Levi would have. Uh, but uh, because of the, the situation, it, it, it appears that they were an acquaintance of some kind, somehow. Um, it, maybe Matthew had just kind of shown up and listened to one of the messages, you know. Um, but Jesus tells him, follow me. Levi gets up, leaves everything there to, to those that are still there, and follows Jesus. So the next passage then, and this, this is what we're told. Says uh, uh, verse 29 32. Then Levi called a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with him. So that's why we figure it was more than just Levi sitting there, that it was a, a, you know, a, a, almost like an office building type thing, because these were his friends that he invited home to this banquet. Hmm. Hmm. These weren't Christ followers. These were basically Levi followers. So Levi's invited all of his friends to come hear this teacher. Kind of like what we're supposed to do for the congregation. We invite people in so, so they can hear. Well, don't, don't, don't yeah, I'm not comparing myself with Jesus by any means. But, but, you, but you get the idea. So, so the, Levi has this big banquet, this big party. He's got all these tax collectors. And it says, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, who belong to their sect, teachers of the law who belong to their sect, complain to his disciples, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, is it not the healthy, is it not the healthy who need a doctor but the sick? It is. Thank you. <laughs> it is not. Well, I'm very dyslexic this morning. It is not the healthy who need a doctor but the sick. Oh, thank you very much. We usually fill churches up with church people. But we send missionaries abroad to do what? To minister to unchurched people. Korea sends more people to the U.S. to do what? Preach to unchurched people. Wow. That's not to say that our, our denomination isn't growing. Our district is growing by leaps and bounds. 
Some churches aren't doing so well. We need to remember that even though we may have been Christians for a long time, we still have friends that are non-Christians. And we understand that it's hard to get them to come to church. But we continue. That's why I think it's so important for us to invite to our, our potlucks. That maybe even we should change the time of that so that it's not back to back with church. Because people think, okay, if I'm coming to the potluck, I should come to the church, so I'm not going to go to the potluck. So if we made the time an hour different, then it's like they're just showing up to that dinner and not the tail end of church. Something to think about. Levi followed Jesus, but he decided to have a great big banquet party at the very end of his, his tax collecting career and invited all of his what? All of his tax collecting friends. And apparently there was a lot of them. So this was a pretty big banquet, pretty big banquet. And it says that the, the, the Pharisees are there, the, the, the scribes, and, 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 and they're complaining. You know, Jesus, here he is, he's supposed to be a teacher of the law. He's supposed to be a, a godly man, and he's eating with all these, these non-godly people. Which Jesus rightly replies, uh, who is it that needs a doctor? The healthy people or the unhealthy Here's what I keep getting back here. It says, I have not come to call the righteous but the sinners to repentance. It's great that a church grows, but it does, it's not great when a church grows from rotation of people. People leave, they go to this church, it's okay, so we still got Christians. We need to be inviting the non-Christians in. Our call is to proclaim the good news to the lost and dying. It's great that we get together and we encourage one another. But we have been called to the sinners and not the righteous. Look at this. I don't know Levi gave a large dinner in his home for Jesus. Everybody was there, tax men and other disres I can't even say that. Disreputable characters. When was the last time we had some disreputable characters? No, I can't. hope not, but I can't even say it. Our dinners should be full of a mix of both. That's right. It's great that we get together, like I said, and we support and encourage and build one another up. We, we are told to do that also. But we're confining ourselves to the property lines. And that doesn't mean that, that we're not talking to others. And I'm just as bad. I'm not talking as much as I should. So Levi gave a large dinner his home for Jesus. Everybody was there. All the bad people. The Pharisees and their religious scholars came to his disciples, greatly offended. What is he doing, eating and drinking with crooks and sinners? Hmm. Jesus heard about it, spoke up. Who needs a doctor, the healthy or the sick? I'm here inviting outsiders, not insiders. Wow. An invitation to a changed life, changed inside and out. What we have to offer people is something very, very important. It's life-changing. It's, it's, it's life-giving. People think that becoming a Christian means that their, their entire life is shut down. It's no, no longer a celebration. It's, it's not fun. It's drudgery. It's a pain. I've got to come in on Sunday. I've got to do this. I would change to any day of the week. People come through that door wanting to hear about Jesus Christ. Maybe that's what we need to do. If our Sundays are this big, maybe our Saturday nights would be this big. We need to figure out a way to reach the lost and dying of our city. We're not a huge city, but a hundred and some odd thousand. We're not reaching 10%. <laughs> We're not reaching 1%. 
And we have a very important message to tell people. We are here to give them an invitation to, to a changed life, changed inside and out. The NIV, uh, verse 33, says, and They said to him, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so, so did the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours go on eating and drinking. What's the reply? And Jesus answered, Can you make friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? He's saying, saying, you know, when the banquet's going on, you're not going to tell people they can't eat. You're not going to, you're not going to fast. A fast is for something, something uh, uh, to make you uh, uh, get back in tune with God. Something a fast is 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 to is kind of a reverent thing. Uh, again, you shouldn't look like you're fasting. He says, fasting is great, but when it's time to celebrate, you need to celebrate. When the cake is there, you just don't leave it. You eat it. He said, the time come, the bridegroom will be taken away from them. In those days, they will fast. Why? Because of the solemn nature. The message. They asked him, John's disciples are well known for keeping fast and saying prayers, also the Pharisees, but you seem to spend most of your time at parties. Why? His answer, when you're celebrating a wedding, you don't skimp on the cake and wine, you feast. Later you may need to pull in your belt, but this isn't the time. As long as the bride and groom are with you, you have a good time. So what's that got to do with us? Sometimes... People walk in, and, and, and I don't think we have this problem. But some churches you can walk in, and it's almost like they're on a fast. There's no celebration. There's no happiness. There's no smiles. There's no... I don't think we have that issue. Because if you can't laugh at half the stuff I do, you've got a problem. If I can't even get the songs right two weeks in a row... We got issues. There's a time for prayer and fasting. But there's a time for celebrating. And if we spend all our time in prayer and fasting, and there's nothing wrong with prayer and fasting, don't get that idea. No, we're going to spend time in prayer and fasting uh, right around Easter. Uh, you may do it before then, but we've got dates set aside for that. But when others look at us, they should see a church that is celebrating. They should see a body of believers that think and, and know that, that knowing Jesus Christ is a celebration. It is not something to be sad about. It is not something to, 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 to moan and groan about. That's why I love doing funerals for saints. Because it is fun for I think of Wilma. Man, I'm alive. That's a fun funeral. It should be. I think of Alice. That's a fun funeral. Uh, people that know where they're going, they, were, they, they, they knew how to celebrate here. I can imagine how they're celebrating in heaven. Huh? We need to start that celebration now. We said, well, we, we do that when we have a baptism. We don't have that many baptisms here. We should be celebrating. We should be having baptisms every week. Huh? We should reach the lost and dying. When the groom is gone, the fasting can begin. No one throws cold water on a friendly bonfire. <laughs> this is kingdom come. Verse 36, 39. Get to the close. He told them this parable. No one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise they will be have torn the new garment and, and a patch from the new will not match the old. It says, and no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise the new wine will burst the skins, the wine will run out, and the wine skins will be ruined. No new wine must be poured. No. Comma. New wine must be poured into new wineskins. And no one 
after drinking old wine, wants the new. For they say the old is better. The message. No one cuts up a fine silk scarf to patch old work clothes. You want fabrics that match. And you don't put wine in old cracked bottles. You get strong, clean bottles for fresh, vintage wine. And no one who has ever tasted fine aged wine prefers unaged wine. I had a quilt. I have no idea who made the quilt. I had it. As long as I could, it was always there. It was always there. It was an old patch quilt. So I assume my grandmother made it. When I got to be about 14, 15, of course, this thing was really shredded and falling apart. And so I did. I patched it up. I'd take an old pair of Levi's and I'd put my own patches on it. What I found was even the old pair of Levi's were stronger than the old quilt. And the stitching would start tearing out the old stuff. Wow. We um, sometimes hold on to the old and try to put new with it and make it change and, and make it work. Old is great. It's fantastic. Like it says, old wine is wonderful. Not that I would know. But, but, but the old wine is good. You don't want the, the fresh stuff. The, it's all sour. It's, it's it, yeah, disgusting. So he relates it back to the Old Testament. There are great things in the Old Testament. There are fantastic things in the Old Testament. But something is coming that's going to change that in miraculous ways. Can't tell him what it is yet. It's not time. He will blend and pull that old, everything that, he was, that was told about him in the Old Testament be brought to the beginning. And he says, the people need to know about it. It's not just for those that already know. That's all well and good. But it's not a private party. It's not a private club. We need to expand the invitation out. We need to make sure that people know that, that the doors are open to everybody and anybody. Yeah, we're sitting on, on a, in, a, in a place that people don't even recognize us as being here. Well, guess what? The church isn't the building. The church is us. We should be recognized every place we go. Almost as if you have a big sign put on you. I am a Christian from Tree of Life. Now, if you're going to do that, make sure you act like you're a Christian from Tree of Life. We have a great, great history. We don't want to live in the past, we want to live in the future. There are great glorious things that are going to happen in this building. I believe there's a day coming when this building will not hold the number of people that will be here. I believe we'll be doing two or three different services here while we look to expand. You say, oh, we don't want to do that. Yeah, we do. You bet we do. Say, so, well, we lose that nice, friendly, small church atmosphere. That's what small groups are for. We want to have people in here so that they reach more people that don't know Christ, so that they reach more people that don't know Christ, so that it expands. We may be small in number, but Jesus started with 12 disciples. And look what happened to that. We're part of that. And we're called to let others know what he is doing in our lives, in the life of our district, in the life of our denomination, in the life of Christianity around the world. I love it that we become a small, small world by internet. Because I can see what's happening in Cambodia. I can see what's happening in all these different countries when they post these things up. And I get excited. But then my heart breaks when I look in our city. And I see people dying every day. 
They've been called to the banquet just like we have. We need to let them know where the party's at. And it's here. Well, we should be shouting and hollering. And I don't want to get too charismatic. You know, I don't want to, people to think we're not Wesleyan, but you, you, you want to know something? We can do stuff and get excited because it's going to happen in heaven. That's right. So, let's go ahead and close this morning.